Thank you, Tammy. That was beautiful. Welcome to Stony Creek United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Michael. I'm happy to see you all here today on this beautiful, crisp autumn morning that God has made. Um, first thing I want to say, a special thank you to everyone who was helping out yesterday at our Tricks and Treat event. Um, we had somewhere between 125, 130 coming through the doors, um, and that is amazing. Um, everyone that I talked to had a really good time. I felt I assume I felt kind of like how some grandparents feel where you have the grandkids come over, you give them a lot of sugar, and then send them home. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it seemed like everyone had a really good time, and I thank you for any way that you were able to, to help in that effort. Um, it was nice to see some new faces and even some returning faces, so um, I think we had a really good turnout. Do we have other announce? Yep, she's already shaking sure. her head. Sure. <laughs> Did I ever tell y'all how much I love you? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I should break into song. Da -da, da -da, da -da. No, no, no. That's, it wouldn't be good. Uh, yeah, it was great last night. And they stayed. I saw one family came in that are new to the district, and they came in at 4. And I saw them leave at 5.30. So they came, and they enjoyed. They relaxed. They thanked us for having it inside. I think that cold. is a great way to move forward, too, because yeah. if it is warm, we can always yeah. move more out where, but yeah. this way we've got a good, good control but of the situation. It was great. And thank you for, let Sarah know, the exchange students. Yes. Oh, they were so, they, I think they had fun. They did the games, most of the games, and I don't know who was having more fun, the kids or the exchange students. <laughs> I don't know. What do you think, Joanna? <laughs> so so that we don't rest on our laurels. Next project is the um, Thanksgiving Day baskets that we will do for 10 families at Bishop. So information will be forthcoming next week. We'll have some flyers out because it's gonna be Thanksgiving before we know it. So, um, and I think, I think even Bob had fun last night, <laughs> didn't you? You even had fun, admit it, you had fun. Okay, <laughs> we all heard it. <laughs> Bob had fun. <laughs> okay, so Katie, any announcements? I don't think I have anything right now. Okay. Um, other thing next week is our uh, celebration of the saints. Um, so please make sure if you had information you wanted to get in related to that, that you have either spoken to me or to Fonda, who is now being handed a microphone. Um, <laughs> Now um, we have uh, quite a few names, but we still would take them today. You could send them to me uh, or the pastor. Um, well, also Katie and Cindy and some of the others that are on the worship committee. <clears throat> and one of the things we are not going to have the potluck larger celebration like we've done, but we will encourage everyone to stay. So if our members are inclined, bring a little extra worship type finger food that would help everybody. Uh, now I have one question though. Yes. Is since we are anticipating a larger after group, are we still having the morning prior service? Yeah, I think we've, we'll still okay. have coffee and stuff and some light snacks because okay. we'll have some folks probably here. Okay, so that's it. And then like I said, or like Barb said, they will be, um, there'll be more information, but it's 10 baskets, which unfortunately does not indicate that we don't need the 25 we did last year. We're finding out there was a lot of people in need. Um, but we have to look at our capabilities. So we're going to do 10 and we're going to count on help. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Fonda. Anybody else got anything for the good of the cause once, twice? Cool. 
Well, before we get started, a just quick reminder that you are all beloved children of God. You are made in God's image, which means you are made with love and grace, and you are beautiful and perfect just the way you are. God welcomes all with open arms, as we do here, and if anyone ever tells you otherwise, just on them. So I'm going to turn things over to our praise band to get us started. Katie, if you would get us ready. All right, both of our songs this morning are in the red folder, so if you would grab a red folder and a pew near you, and please stand up and join us for This Is My Commandment, number 26 on page 7.
Christ, my grower, you make all things new in the body and word. Feed your people with love, joy, and peace. Lead us today and every day to the front of new beginnings. Teach us how to slow up what you have commanded and to prove what does not nourish the creation. In the name of the Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer, one God, now and forever. Amen. And this is the invitation to offering. Let us show our friendship with Christ and our love for our neighbors by giving generously so that we may bear the lasting fruit of Christ's love. Please rise as you are able and join in our doxology number 95 in the hymnal. O oh God, give your loving spirit to the world in need to comfort. Make our many gifts one offering for the world in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay. It's time now It is now a time for all of God's children. I'd like to invite any of our children or youth to come hang out. And remember, you are all children of God. You are always all welcome to come forward. But if you want something out of here, you gotta come up. But you don't have to sit on the floor, you could even sit in a pew. Oh! I got my, I got my shoes on the wrong feet. And, and they are like the best shoes ever. Okay. I see that. You got a cow. Did you name your cow? It actually has a name. Oh. I have no idea how to pronounce that name. Couldn't tell you. So what day is your birthday, Molly? Is it, it is today? You know who else's birthday is today? Who? My sisters. My twin sisters were born today. Not like today, today, but several years ago today. Um, and I actually wanted to tell you about them because what I'm gonna talk with the congregation about in a little while is about love and how God wants us to love each other. And I am so blessed because my older sisters have always loved me and looked out for me and taken really good care of me. The only reason I turned out halfway decent was because of them. 
and I don't get to see them as much as I'd like to, but they still have a huge impact on me the same way that God still has a huge impact on me. And so I wanted to know who in your life just really, you just really feel how much they love you. Can be anybody. Who, who do you really feel like just really, really loves you? My parents. Your parents? What about you? Mimi. Mimi? Okay. Blanket. Oh, your blanket. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> you got anybody? Anybody you want to lift up? Is <laughs> that um, your parents? Your family? Okay, good. And do you guys remember when, what I sometimes tell you guys about the, our congregation and all the other, all, other Christians? What do I call them? Family. That's right, family of God. So not only do we have our biological families who, who love us, but we have the whole family of God. And even though we don't always agree or get along sometimes, just like regular families, we still love each other. And God wants us to go out into the world and share that love. And you know what? It's actually not that hard to do. In fact, I've watched all three of you do it. That's perfect example. <laughs> but even the way that you guys are, how you're kind to your friends and your teachers and how you help each other, that's all awesome ways of showing God's love. So I already know you can do it. So I just want you guys to keep doing it. Can you do that? <laughs> Okay, so. I forgot one person. What? <laughs> All right, so what do we need to do every day from the mor minute we get up? Uh, Back up a little bit. We should love uh, everybody. Yay. Right, okay. So that's what I want you guys to keep doing. Keep doing the good work of showing God's love to everybody and being good to each other. <clears throat> think, there you go. Um, all right, can you do that? Yes. You think so? Mm -hmm. Okay, I need your help with two things. Two? Two Ooh. things. Dos. Two? We need to do a repeat after me prayer, and then I need you to help me lead the congregation in the Lord's Prayer. Do you think we can do that? Yeah. Okay, you want to do the repeat, <laughs> repeat after me prayer? Yes. Okay, dear God, dear God, thank you, thank you. for your love. For all the world, for all the world, and each of us, and each of us. Amen. Okay, now we got to lead the congregation in the Lord's prayer because they forget the words sometimes. No, I don't. <laughs> all right, you ready? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you guys for hanging out with me. Come grab something, and then I think Miss A has some... Wait, one thing? You can have two. I think Miss A's got some fun stuff for you. And if the rest of you would please rise as you are able for our next hymn, which is number 98, To God Be the Glory.
seated. Now is the time that we bring before God and God's people the things that weigh, uh, weigh upon our hearts and our minds, as well as those that give us cause for celebration. Please keep in mind that you have no expectation of having to lift any pray or prayers uh, before us, but if you would like to lift any aloud, now would be the time. Do we have any joys or concerns we'd like to share? Sorry, but I forgot to mention that after service, we have some hot dogs for anybody who would like to enjoy them and snacks that are left over from last night. So please come and enjoy. Thank you. I'd just like to uh, ask everyone that uh, thank you for your prayers for my daughter. She spent a week down in Valdosa, Georgia, working with uh, people cleaning up down there, and uh, she got back about 11 o'clock last night, so I didn't get too much sleep. <laughs> but uh, she did have a good time, and uh, was well worth her trip down there. Chris, we had one in the... Duct tape the thing to my hand. Um, I just want to say you guys have made me feel really welcome here. Uh, Becky Clavassier and I are traveling to Florida. I would like travel mercies for us. And a praise and thank you to Lori for sharing her church with me. We have any others? Okay, I would like to add uh, two. Uh, one I mentioned earlier today is my sister's birthday. Um, I won't tell you how old they are, out of respect for them, but they're older than I am. Um, <laughs> and uh, many of you know I'd mentioned before that my uncle, um, who's been fighting cancer, was uh, rushed to the hospital after fracturing both his wrists um, in a fall at home. He is now out of the hospital and in rehab, working to, to get that kind of back to normal as it can be. They weren't really able to do surgery, but while he was in the hospital, um, his health actually deteriorated very quickly, and I was there with my aunt and my cousin, not really expecting him to, to still be here right now, but we are very thankful that he has rebounded from whatever was messing with his blood pressure and a bunch of other stuff. So thank you for your continued prayers uh, for his health, and hopefully the, the rehab time won't take too much out of him, and he'll be back home with my aunt soon. If you would open up the thin black hymnals, The Faith We Sing, and turn to number 2193 for our invitation to prayer, Lord, listen to your children praying. This morning for our prayers, when you hear me say, God who makes us one, I invite you to reply with the words, hear our prayer. Let us join with all creation in praying for the good of the earth, saying, God who makes us one, hear our prayer. O oh God, we give you thanks for your Holy Spirit whose work at creation continues in us. Through Christ Jesus, you have shown your love for this earth you made. We pray that all the world may know your power and goodness. God who makes us one, hear our prayer. Word of life, reveal the wonder of your world to all people. Show us anew what lives around us, over us, beneath us, and within us. Enliven the church with your spirit that we may honor your earth with responsible care. God who makes us one, 
Hear our prayer. Almighty God, uphold our sisters and brothers who endure disasters caused by weather, war, famine, sickness, or greed. Strengthen all who are in peril, especially the people that have been affected by the storms and the hurricanes in the southeast. For the people in Palestine and Gaza, Israel, Ukraine, Russia, and all other places where war and violence continue to flourish. You are our refuge and strength, a very present help in time of trouble. God who makes us one, hear our prayer. Giver of all good things, bring trust and sympathy to the nations of the world. Let peacemakers reign wherever there is conflict. Give wisdom to leaders and hope to the poor. God who makes us one, hear our prayer. Good healer, we pray for all who are in need of comfort. Comfort those who mourn, uphold those who are sick or holding vigil, awaiting words of hope, especially those that we have already named and those we hold quietly in our hearts and minds. Lord, we also ask for travel mercies for everyone as we go about our day, and especially for those who are going long distances. May they be able to travel safely. May road rage and other human conflicts not be present. May we always show grace and mercy to one another in all our interactions. May we show the true sign of your peace and love for one another. God who makes us one, hear our prayer. God full of blessing and joy, we give you thanks for the opportunity to celebrate birthdays, anniversaries, and other lifetime events with those we love most, even those who are far away from us. We give you thanks for the healing that many have received. We give you thanks for the efforts of all of the medical staff, including doctors, nurses, surgeons, and everyone else who is working so hard to help heal your creation. We thank you for the blessings of teachers and school staff and administration who are dedicated and working hard to help our students learn and grow into the amazing people that you have intended them to become. God, we give you thanks for all the amazing blessings in this world, especially those that we don't always even notice, but we do know in our hearts are there. God, who makes us one, hear our prayer. Trusting in your mercy, we commend to you all those we have named and those whose needs are known only to you. In the name of your Son, Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And if you would please join me aloud in our prayer for illumination. Come, Holy Spirit, that through your word we may be guided into the love of God for all the world. Amen. Our first scripture reading for today is from Psalm 22, verses 25 through 31 in the Pew Bible on 544. Come, you come theme of my praise in the great assembly before those who fear you. I will fill my vow. The poor will eat and be satisfied. Those who seek the Lord will praise him. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth will remember and turn to the Lord, and all families of the nations will bow down before him, for domination belongs to the Lord, and he rules over nations. All the riches of the earth will feast and worship. All who go down to the dust will kneel before him. Those who cannot keep themselves alive, prosperity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord. They will proclaim his righteousness, declare to the people, yet I'm born, he has done it. This is the word of God for the people of God. Be to God. Now will you please stand for hymn number 292, What a Wondrous Love Is This.
Please be seated. Our second scripture reading for this morning can be found beginning on page 1068 in the Bibles and the pews. We are in the 15th chapter of John's Gospel, looking at verses 1 through 17. This section of text begins with the header, The Vine and the Branches. I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no, has no one than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, and so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command, love each other. This is the word of God for the people of God. God. If you would join me once again in an attitude of prayer. God of abundant love, mercy, and grace, you call us to be fruitful and to share your message with all the world. Sharing with a stranger can be intimidating and challenging for us at times, but we know that you are always there with us. Help us through the love of one another and the power of the Holy Spirit to follow your commandment to love instead of living the way we too often do that leads us astray and closes us down to your perfect and freely given grace. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts together in this place be pleasing in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. My maternal grandfather very much had a green thumb. And he, he passed that skill, those traits, down to my mother. Now, I'm not really sure if either of my sisters have shown to have inherited those same skills, uh, but I definitely did not. Um, I'm not exactly saying I have a black thumb, but I definitely don't have a green one either. And I always thought the saying, uh, a green thumb, was just relating to the fact that a lot of plants, especially those that we cultivate, um, have green, either in their leaves or branches, somewhere. But I recently learned that that's not exactly how that phrase came about. While it's not 100% uh, agreed upon, the strong rumor is that the term green thumb comes from during the reign of King Edward I of England, somewhere between 1272 and 1307. And the legend says that the king was fond of green peas, which I don't know why I'm not a fan, um, but he was. And he decided to award a prize for the greenest thumb, which went to the serf that had shelled the most peas during the season. According to James Underwood Crockett, the term green thumb never really had anything to do with skill, but rather from the stains that gained on one's thumbs and their fingers from 
holding and working with flower pots that had algae growing on their outside surface, which would then indicate to someone else that that person was a regular gardener. Arian Isidoro once explained that love is like a garden. It needs constant nurturing and care. You gotta tend to it daily, remove the weeds and repair. It's the soil, the seeds, the sun, the rain, all working together. That's how it blossoms and grows. That's the beauty of forever. Love is a central theme throughout the Bible, and depending on which translation you were to look at and go through, the word love shows up somewhere between 300 and 800 times, which I have to admit is kind of a drastic range to be thinking about. But a few of those instances come in our reading from John's Gospel for today that I read to you a few moments ago. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. This is my command, love each other. The love command is the imperative moment of Christ's teaching that pretty much what it does is it prevents the church from being an inward turned and self-contained reality. The greatest commandment as Jesus refers to it in Matthew's gospel encompasses love of God and neighbor. And it's important to recognize that the two do not exist separately from each other. They exist together. The imperative to bear fruit in works of love is reinforced by this image that Jesus talks about, this branch that fails to respond positively to God's pruning and provincial care. The branch withers, cut off from its source of life and fruitfulness, and its usefulness is basically reduced to basic firewood. On the other side, or the positive end of the stick, if you will, is that the branches remaining in me, in Jesus, will bear much fruit and qualify as disciples. One of the primary ways I think that we can understand this passage is that it is ultimately talking about the Christian life. To live the abundant Christian life, we must reach out to the world. We need to be involved with other Christians as well as reaching out to those who do not yet know about Christ and God's love and grace. One of the chief difficulties, I think, in, in thinking theologically and, and thus practically and ethically about this passage, it lies in the necessity of going beyond the surface of the basic truths of faith. And for however much these surface truths retain their validity, a consideration of the history of the church reveals that there can be dramatically new, socially disruptive responses to Jesus' demands that retain their radical character despite denominational domestications. Let me offer you a couple examples. First, first example is Paul. Paul absolutely shocked and blew some people away in the early church by admitting Gentiles to baptism even though they had not been circumcised. Anthony provoked great admiration and imitation by his turning the desert of Egypt into a space for contemplation and love of God. Francis called lending features of the 12th and 13th, or sorry, leading features of the 12th and 13th century church into question with his radical dependence on Jesus, manifest in his propertyless way of life. Or what about Luther and other reformers who rent the fabric of the 16th century uh, 
Catholicism by cutting the Christian conscience free from the church's really conflation of its authority with that of the secular government. Years later, Anabaptist reformers called Luther, Calvinist, Zwingli, I hope I said that right, and their followers to relinquish any recourse to the sword and state-sponsored violence. Then down the road, Christians of a variety of denominations in the New World and in Great Britain, they agitated that slavery was incompatible with Christianity long before of the work of abolitionists of antebellum America. Oftentimes when someone is struggling with a difficult time, rather casually, they will be offered the advice to just hang in there. Many of you probably remember the poster that was very popular in many offices in the 1980s and 90s of the little kitten holding on to a branch with the words, hang in there. But let's be real, those, those words really aren't so helpful. Especially for someone who is desperately wondering how to just hang in there. Jesus offers so much more than hanging in there. Yes, hard times will invariably come, but living, abiding, finding our home in Jesus, the vine and God, the grower, sustains us, prompting even greater well-being. Bearing fruit when it counts, the growth from union with Jesus. Finding that home in him and letting his word find a home in us through faithful devotion brings about great joy. Something else I think that is really important for us to acknowledge here is that Jesus counsels and prays with his disciples. He invites them to stay close by placing their trust in him. He warns them directly, outright, that they cannot go it alone. They cannot trust in just their own strength. On their own, they would be cut off from that life source that Jesus is for them. They would bear no fruit. There is a word that followers need to heed today. The temptation to go it out on our own is so great so often. We live in a world and a society that promotes independence and, and making something of ourselves. And though it is a valid goal, self-worth often becomes equated with our success and what we can produce. It becomes so easy to, to think of it as, excuse me, becomes so easy to think it is all up to us and our own resources, our own efforts, as we try to solve problems and meet new challenges. But, but without love, none of this matters. None of this may even be able to be recreated in the first place. The command to love when done through and with Christ can do anything. This is, is just a part of the good news that we can find in this section of text. And I would argue that love, real genuine love, is what opens the doors for us, removes some of the, the challenges that we face, and helps instruct us to go out into the world. Jesus doesn't send the disciples out one alone, but sends them out in pairs to go and spread the good news of his love and mercy and grace with the world. We are still called to that same mission in the Ed Methodist Church that is right there on all kinds of paperwork and posters and everything else to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of this world. And Jesus sent his disciples out in pairs of two, never alone, 
when we work together, when we are together, we are better, we can do more, we can show more, we can love more. When we are in pairs or even a larger group, which I believe really is open to the movement of the Holy Spirit and is not limited by our our human ways of thinking and understanding, we can live abundant Christian lives that bring us out into the world in love for all people and all creation. God loves us and wants us to go out to help others see that love, to experience that love, to embrace the need to be involved with other Christians as well as those who have not yet come to know the good news. Jesus showed us exactly how we can do that. Throughout his entire life and time in ministry, we get perfect examples of how to love one another, giving a helping hand, holding someone in prayer. There are so many little things we do that sometimes we don't even think about it that are actually beautiful signs of love for someone else. You never know where someone else is in their life, their story, how they got where they are. And by showing someone even the smallest amount of mercy and compassion, you can make an impact on that person that will go far beyond your knowledge, possibly forever. One small act of love can change the world for one or a million people. And again, we have such perfect examples of ways we can do that. It doesn't have to be a huge, grandioso event, although by all means, please feel free to do so. But even just the small things, asking how someone's doing, helping someone with carrying their groceries or moving something in their home, holding the door open, all these little things that I think sometimes subconsciously we take for granted, we don't really think about it, we just kind of do it, those are acts of love. And that command to love each other, that is how you will know that you are my disciples, or that's how the world will know you are my disciples. There are so many ways we can do that. The other part of that, though, is we also have to be willing to accept the love from others. Because just as I said, we cannot go it alone. As Jesus told his disciples, they cannot go it alone. Neither can we. We have to be willing to accept the love that someone else is giving to us. Sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's hard. But I promise you, when we are able to not only give love, but accept love, whether from another person or from God, your joy will be full and you will experience this life in new ways beyond any expectation you could ever have. Amen. If you would rise as you are able for our closing hymn, number 529 in the red hymnal, How Firm a Foundation.
who are called to be the light of the world, to shine the love of God into every corner of the earth, you beloved children of the Almighty Lord, go out with joy that you have been fed and healed, securely abiding as branches of the true vine. Go and tell the story of faith that is given to you by the one who never lets you go. Seek out those who abound with sacred questions and be ready to answer a mystery with love. And now as Jesus entered into human life, his life is still alive in you. The blessing of Almighty God be upon you today and always. Amen.